The following is an interview with my mama about Appalachian folk practices. This is presented for anthropological interest in folklore. None of this should be considered medical advice, and none of this is provable. If you have a health issue, please consult a medical doctor, not folk magic. It should also be noted many of our spiritual views are contextualized in the framework of Christianity. If that's not your style, feel free to skip this one. Just a heads up. Thank you. Enjoy. So uh, I'm interested in like folk practices and stuff like that in, in Appalachia. So I wanted to ask you some of the questions because I know that we have some things that are in our family that we do. Okay, that's fine. So um, the, the pencil test, you know what that is? Yeah, I, re- I know that. It, it's to tell if the baby's a, a boy or a girl. You guys would like put a, a pendulum or like a pencil on a needle and hold it over the belly. Do, do you know how that works? Well, you're supposed to put your wedding band on it and then you just dangle it over the belly. And if it's a girl, I think it's supposed to turn around. And if it's a boy, it's just supposed to go back and forth. And I, I know that's how it works. Well, well, do you know like what makes it do that? No, I, I really don't. No, you know, we were raised up and, and we was told that, you know, from the time we was old enough to hear it. So about all I know about it as far as that goes. So where, where does it come from, the, the idea? Well, I guess it started way back when women, back in the old days, uh, with the pencil and the string and the, and the wedding band and stuff like that, I guess they just thought, well, you know, if they try to, I don't actually know for sure, but I guess if the baby was a boy and the ring swung one way or the other, you know, I guess that's how they, I don't know. I just know that's what we was told. Do you know if that comes from, like, any kind of culture, like Irish or German or something like that? No, I just, well, it could have been from both, actually, because, you know, back in the day, that's how they did things. I mean, I'm not for sure. So you heard it from from your parents growing up? Yes. (laughs) I heard it from my grandmother and then my mom and, you know, way back when, as far as I can remember, it's just, you know, it's been a thing with the women folks, and that's how they've done it. Is it like one particular side of the family? Uh, well... No, uh, I see my grandmother, I think she was Irish. Yeah, she was. And uh, so it may have started, you know, from that. I don't know. Um, the, the other thing that I've heard about is the, the curing of, like, warts and stuff. Did you go into that? Oh. <laughs> well, um, the wart thing, my dad used to know how to do that. Um, there's something in the Bible he would say, and then he would, you know, like wet his finger with his tongue. And then he would rub it all over the wart, and in a couple of days the wart would just disappear. But it's actually a verse out of the Bible. I don't know what verse it was because Dad never did tell me. Okay. Do you know where that kind of thing comes from, like the practice of doing that? I think it was something like a gift, you know, like someone had, you know, like um, some people can uh, draw fire, uh, some people can stop bleeding, and, and some people can, you know, make horses disappear, and it's just verses out of the Bible. I don't know, I guess it was just maybe a culture thing that they did way back then, but, you know, as far as I know, it's just verses out of the Bible you can say. Okay. Is there, like, a particular side of the family that that was on? My dad's. Okay. What, what is uh, drawing fire, what you said? Well, you know, like if you get burnt really bad, and if you're if you're a man, now this is just a, an old thing again, but I have seen it done. If your dad would have passed away before you were born, then when you become older, you know, you could you could draw fire. You could draw like the burning out of someone's body. Like if they if you burnt your hand real bad, and you know how that feels, you can draw the heat out of that by saying a verse out of the Bible. But, again, I don't know, you know, what the verse is. I have seen it done. I just don't know what the verse was. I should have found out all this stuff, but I just, you know, I took it for granted that, you know, someone else would know it. I'm sure like everybody else did. Because mm-hmm. yeah, what I heard was the, the spitting on warts. And uh, there's a, a line in the Mark Gospel where Jesus heals a blind man by spitting on his eyes. It's Mark eight twenty three, and it says... He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hand on him, Jesus said, Do you see anything? So there's a, a line in there where Jesus heals by spitting on people. Well, I'm sure it, yeah, I'm sure it was, but, you know, I, I don't know what the, you mm. got something there. It could be. I'd say you're probably right. So it's like the, you know, healing in the same way that Jesus did. 
is there a word do you know for that practice like is there something that they called that uh with the warts no i just know you know that um i know my dad was going to take a, a little boy's warts off he, he had a lot of them on his hand and um so he was supposed to go up that evening and uh, take the warts off the little boy's hand and when the little boy was getting off the bus the car hit him and killed him and he didn't dad didn't get to do it Whoa. but you know i do know that i mean i think it's got some, i know it has a lot to do with faith you know inside yourself what you can do if you if you believe it strong enough and if you if the other person that you're doing it to believes it then it's supposed to be true it's supposed to come true you know but i guess your faith has to be that strong and and that was so you know mm-hmm. so is it technically like uh, like faith healing or folk healing something like that uh, i would say it's more like some type of spiritual healing Okay. And then I just think people just kept it going, you know, like like you said, we read that scripture out of the Bible, you know, I think uh, along the generations, after generations, I guess they just kept that going, and, and maybe that's where it came from, but I do know that I think it's a spiritual thing. Mm-hmm. So if you don't believe in it, then it wouldn't work? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think you would really have to, uh, in my opinion, I don't know, you know, I'm just saying, I'm guessing, but in my opinion, I think you'd have to really believe it in order for it to work, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you know any of the, the verses, or just, you know, the, the, the healing? I, I know the verse where you can stop the bleeding, uh, but <laughs> a, a woman can tell a man, but she can't tell another woman. Like, if I would tell you, then you wouldn't be able to tell another man. Now, if I tell you, then you can tell your mother, but you can't tell another man, like your dad or something like that. It's That's just how it's passed on. Hmm. So you mean like to, to teach them how to do it or just to tell them what the verse is? Tell them what the verse is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, I've heard that before, like the uh, the whole pass from male to female, female to male thing. I've heard that. Yes, it's true. It is true. Okay, so who taught you the, the blood verse then? My dad. He told me the verse in the Bible and he told me what I was supposed to do and, and all that. Yes. Okay. And I'd be more glad to show you if you want me to. Okay, well, I'm, I'm recording right now, so I don't know how that would how that would go. People of all genders are going to be watching the, the video then, so, you know, I don't know if you're allowed to do that, the verses and stuff, but, you know, I wouldn't want to do anything that you think is not supposed to do, you know what I mean? I understand, yeah. Okay. I mean, as far as me telling you, I could, you know, I could tell you. Again, like I said, you have to really believe I can't just tell you and you say, well, I can go out and do this. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. so like, again, it's a spiritual thing. You have to really believe it in your heart and whole being that you can do this. And, and you just have to read the scripture and, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So have you ever used the, the verse then? Yes, several times. Okay. Could you tell what happened with that? Like, tell the story? always had friends coming around you know when when he was growing up and they would always get hurt or cut or something you know and they'd always come to me especially would come to me every time he got hurt or he wrecked his bicycle or he wrecked on a motorcycle or something like that happened to him he would always come to me and i would stop the bleeding and and bandage him up and everything and you know he he was fine with that but i've, I've used it several times on just different people okay then that always works Okay, that's cool. So it's like a wound is bleeding, and then you say the verse, and then it just like stops bleeding? Mm-hmm. You hold your hand over it, and you just, you know, you take a rag or your hand, or you hold something over it, and you hold it real tight, and you say the verse, and, and if it keeps on bleeding, just keep repeating the verse, and then most of the time the bleeding will slow down and stop. I'd say not unless it's an artery. Now, if it's an artery, that's another story. Okay. But I mean just to go out here, you know, like and, uh, and cut yourself or... Well, even if you had stitched, have to have it stitched up, you know, I'd say sometimes it works. Okay. Well, it sounds very useful. It really is. I haven't had to use it for a long time, but it worked for me, you know. Like I said, it works for me. So, again, it's a spiritual thing that's been handed down from generation to generation to generation, so... Mm-hmm. And it, it could help, like, if someone's, like, really badly hurt, you could, like, stop the bleeding and help them, so that's cool. Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay, I, I would assume it also has something to do with, like, the laying on of hands and stuff, because in the verse I was just reading, Jesus is healing by, like, touching people, like, putting his hands on them. So the same you were talking about with the warts and then this, they, they put the hands on them as well. Yes. Okay. Is, are there other people in the family that uh, know that or ha- know how to use uh, verses like that? 
no, not that I know of. I know Dad told me, but I don't think he told anyone else. Okay. Are people on your mother's side of the family, did they have verses that they used? I can't really say on my mother's side. It was mostly all on my dad's side. And my mom, now, she was born with a, uh, a veil on her face. And when she was born, the doctor removed the veil, you know, off her face. But they said that uh, she would be able to see things that nobody else could. But she never did. You know, that's just another old thing they have. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. It's called like a, a veil or a, a call. Yes. My mom had that when she was born. Oh, oh, one thing uh, I actually heard is that people have verses in the Bible that they could use to change the weather, like because uh, Jesus stops the storm and stuff like that. So there are certain verses that people say they can use to like stop the storm. There's like a really bad storm outside. They could like, you know, abate the storm. I've heard that. I've heard that. I haven't actually seen it, but I have heard about that. I don't know. I, I don't know about that. But I, I think that comes from the man upstairs. But you know, that's you know, as far as I know, that my yeah. dad or mom never knew anything like that. So, so when you when the the verses that people use in the Bible, do you think that uh, the healing power? Where would you say that comes from? Do you think it comes from the Bible itself, like the the power of the words, or that it comes from like Jesus healing on behalf of the people who are saying the words? Like, where do you think the the healing comes from? Like I said, it's a spiritual thing, and you really have to believe with all your heart that that's, that's going to work. You know, when you when you do it, now, I do believe. Yeah, it's, it's it comes from Jesus. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what denomination uh, of Christian are the people on that side of the family? Baptist. Okay. Is like uh, everyone that you know from that side is Baptist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So, do you think the the healing thing has anything to do with like the Baptist denomination? I think it, yes, I do. I think it has a lot to do with them. Yes, I do. Okay. Are, are you Baptist as well? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Is there anyone in the family that comes from any other tradition? Uh, my sister, she's Catholic. Okay. Okay. Are there any other, like, um, spiritual gifts or spiritual things that are in the family you know about? Not right offhand. I can't think of any. I do know Dad had done the wards, and I knew a man that could draw the fire, and then um, I can stop the bleeding. As far as right now, that's all I can think of. Okay. Who who was that that you knew that could draw fire? Uh, his name was. Okay. Was he like a neighbor or something? Uh, he was a friend of my dad's. Okay. So you so you knew other people that were friends that could do stuff like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything interesting there? No, just you know the fact that uh, he could draw the fire. There's all kind of old things and and things people do culture wise. Okay. So were there uh, like local people in the area you grew up who could do that? Mm-hmm. Was it talked about in church at all? Uh, no. I never heard it talked in, in, you know, where we went to church at. Okay. Well, what region of West Virginia did you grow up in? Uh, well, I grew up on the mountain, so whatever region that is, that's where I was raised, born and raised at, out there on top of that mountain. Okay. That's cool. Um, another thing that uh, is kind of like a folksy thing is um, the elderberry beads that you guys use for teething. Yes. Yes. And you can also use uh, not just elderberry beads, but my dad which goes back to him again, used to, he did the elderberries, and he also did rattlesnake buttons. Those were used to also. Rattlesnake what? Buttons, you know, like the rattlers off of a rattlesnake. Yeah. My brother wore those on a necklace. My dad made him and stuck around his neck, hmm. and, and that was used for teething also, along, you know, with, you can use the elderberry uh, root too, supposed to be nine beads you have to cut the elderberry root into nine beads and thread it and you have to put that needle in that thread right through the heart of that root in order for it to help the baby with uh, teething and diarrhea and stuff like that they used to call it summer complaint or something like that yeah that elderberry the root was actually that was what was used for and then where the gums swelled so bad you know sometimes when they get cranky and irritable that was supposed to help with that. And like I said, elderberry is good, is good for your body. So mm-hmm. I guess maybe that's why that worked. Was there, is there anything else like that that you can think of where you like use something like from nature or just something that you put on someone that helps them in some way or does something spiritual? Uh, I guess there's, you know, like uh, you can use all kind of uh, herbs and stuff for different types of stuff to heal you with. But 
out. I never was to, you know, just the elderberry and the rattlesnake button is all, you know, my dad ever, I ever seen him practice with was that. Okay. Any, like, uh, alternative medicine stuff? Uh, well, <laughs> I know you're not going to believe this one, but I'll tell it to you anyway. My dad took, uh, back in the day, the coal miners used to use uh, them old lanterns. They'd put them on the front of their caps. They was just like a, they twisted apart and they would put, uh, it's not battery acid, it's, uh, but they would put that in uh, the battery and it would keep the light, uh, you know, shining um, for them underground. But my dad took some out of his um, carbide, is what it's called, carbide, and you would put it in there and it would keep your lamp, you know, burning so you could see inside the mines, but, or underground, but dad would took a piece of that, I saw him take a piece of that one time and put it in his tooth. His tooth was hurting so bad he couldn't stand it. And, you know, back then people just didn't have the money to, to go to the dentist and stuff, so they used what they could. Uh, so he took that piece of carbide and put in his tooth, and it killed the nerve in his tooth, so his tooth quit hurt. Hmm. That's yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And I've also, um, this is another old thing, you can take cobwebs. You know, like cobwebs that grows in your house or wherever in a barn or an mm-hmm. old building or something. You can take spider webs and lay on a person that's bleeding, and it will stop the bleeding. People would have used that. So anything that, um, I guess, uh, are there like superstitions, like things that you consider superstitions that you guys did? Well, we never walked under ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Dad never would let us walk under ladders. He'd always say that was superstition. Um, which most everybody says that, so I, I don't know where that even started from, but yeah, like the salt maybe of... something bad happened to somebody, you know, back in the day, and then they said, well, don't walk under that ladder because something bad's going to happen to you, like it did me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the salt over the left shoulder type stuff, right? Uh-huh, yeah, that was used, yep, that was used. It was bad luck if you spilled it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just so many different things, you know, you'd say is superstitious, but a lot of people just didn't believe in them. So was there anything that, um, like for spiritual protection, like if you wear this, you'll be protected type stuff, or if you do this, you'll be protected? Well, my dad used to carry a, a buckeye in his pocket. He always said that was uh, good to, for some kind of luck. I don't know what, I can't even remember now. Hmm. Uh, anyways, he always carried one in his pocket. Any other thing for, for good luck or to keep away bad luck? My dad always just said, you know, he dad always prayed a lot, you know, and he would say different things out of the Bible, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of people says if you wear crosses, it's supposed to keep away the evil. I guess it's just what you believe in, you know, what you think is it'll work for you. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I know the mother doesn't like having a welcome mat because she's like, it welcomes the spirits in or something like that. Uh, yes, a lot of people do, so just, you don't have a welcome mat out either. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I, I, that one I just don't believe in. There's other things like uh, like opening a pocket knife, like the person who opens it has to be the one to close it, things like that. Yes, yes, my dad always said that because it's uh, cut, supposed to cut your love in two. Hmm, that's interesting. Mother said something about like, uh, like don't hit someone with a broom or you'll go to jail or something like that. Yeah, that was another old saying people used to say all the time, you know, back in the day, and, and I didn't understand that one either, but uh, a lot of people still carry that out. I mean, there's a lot of old sayings people still carry out today. You know, with that. So, like I said, I think it's something, you know, that, that you believe will happen. Yeah, like a black cat cross your path sort of thing? Yeah, superstition. Mm-hmm. Like whistling in a graveyard? Yeah, I've heard that one too. A lot of graveyard ones, right? Like don't step on someone's grave and, you know, you don't turn back when you leave and all that sort of thing? Yeah, my dad's always told us don't never step on a grave because you're stepping on a person. And it was always bad luck. It, it, like you said, if you don't ask for forgiveness, you step on it or something. Or say you're sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, one I heard that I, I don't quite understand is like, like if something bad happens and you like X your mirrors, like a black cat across your path, they say X your mirrors. Do you know what that means? Uh, I haven't never heard that one. I've always heard you just make like three crosses, you know, three X's or three crosses, either one that people say that keeps away the evil. Okay, so like X's can like, they're like crosses? X's and crosses, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you like draw that on the mirror or like what do you do? I don't know. I've never tried that. I've never heard of the one with it. I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never actually saw it done. I don't know. Okay. Do you know anything about like you like carve symbols or something onto something like that? I've never carved anything other than, you know, like a cross or something like that. 
Okay, so crosses or X's can be like a thing you can do for protection then. Uh huh. Okay, that's yeah. interesting that it could be like an X. It could be an X too. It's interesting. Yeah, it can be an X too. Um, I've heard uh, the crowns in your head. Now, if you have two crowns in your head, it's supposed to be either you're going to be smart or rich. Hmm. Okay. Have you he- have you heard of hoodoo before? I've heard of it, but I've never saw any of it. Okay, that's like a thing that comes from black people who came over during the slave trade. It comes from like voodoo and things like that. Have you ever known anyone that did voodoo or hoodoo? My dad used to talk about, you know, back uh, people doing it back in the day, but I never saw it done. Let me go back to, to word usages for a minute here. Uh, the stuff that you guys would do with like for teething and healing and all that sort of thing. Is there like a word you guys would call it? Would you call it like superstitions, folk practices, folk healing, anything like that? I'd say it was folk healing. Okay. But you never got you never had like a specific word for it that you guys would call it? No, just uh dad would always say it was good, you know, for teasing. But all I know it was used for like the rattlesnake buttons and the elderberry beads. Do you know if there was anyone that he learned it from other than his parents? Like if there were people around that were telling him things to try? No, I guess he heard it, you know, from his parents and his parents did it. Then I guess their parents did it, you know, and it was just handed down from generation to generation. You ever read any, like, books on the subject? No, I don't. I just, you know, I, I believe what my parents told me, you know, which most kids want to believe their parents. And, and of course, like I said, I, I saw my dad do it and uh, worked. And so I just usually, you know, believe what he told me and what he did, so. Okay. What I think people do, you know. Okay. Did he ever use any books other than the Bible? Yeah, my dad used to love to read. He read all kinds of books. He, my mom had all kind of books of dads in the attic. I mean, they were way, oh gosh, they were old, old. And uh, I don't know what she did with it. I think she gave them to somebody. The dad loved to read. He, he would sit down and read any kind of book there was. He loved reading. Hmm. That's interesting. Did he, did he have uh, books on spirituality and things like that? If he did, I don't. I never read. You know what he. Uh, I don't. I like to read for a little bit, and then I, I got to get up and move around. I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not really hard for reading a lot, but yeah, I like reading. I, yeah, no, my sister does too. She loves to read. Does she do anything interesting, like spiritually, like um, like little folksy stuff or healing or things like that? She does the holy water. You can take holy water and uh, sprinkle it around the outside of your house, or you can put it on your door, make a cross, so you can put it on your finger and put holy water on your finger and make like a cross on your door, and you can put it on your windows outside, and it's supposed to keep evil out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like um, the blessing, like if someone's getting ready to die, she mm-hmm. can do that. Um, like last rites stuff? Yes. Okay. That's about all I know that just me and her that actually, you know, done anything that our parents have did or something she learned about reading, you know, books or her religion or something. Okay, have you heard of like like signs and wonders? Like what? I don't know, like a sign from God or like a wonder from God? Like what oh, they can say? Oh, okay, yes, yes. I've always heard it say, well, God gave me a sign or, you know, he told me this or he showed me that, something like that. Was there, was there anything like that growing up? Any like uh, observing of signs, like this happened and that's a sign from God? Yeah, yeah, there used to be all kind of stuff like that, like a certain star in the sky twinkling, you know, and um, they would say that was a gift. My dad used to say, uh, well, like when his dad was dying, he was home, and uh, his mom was at the hospital with his dad, and he told he asked God if God would show him a sign if his dad was going to live or not. And he walked out on the porch, he said, and, God showed him a sign. I think it was a storm coming around the hill or something. So he noticed his dad wasn't one of them, that his dad had died, and he did. Hmm. So I guess a lot of people believe in signs like that. You know, like if you would something like like that right there. You know, my dad he always just he asked God, and then if something would happen, I guess they would take that as a sign. You know, like he God was showing them, showing him. Mm-hmm. Was there any, like, um, observing of, like, what animals did? Like, oh, the, the birds flew this way or something like that, and so that's, like, a, a sign type thing? Well, everybody always says, well, the birds, you know, the, they know their winter's bad weather coming, things like that, about the weather, but that's all I know. Okay, what about the term divination? No, what is that one? Uh, so, like, the word divine, which would be, like, God, and then divination would be, like, communication with God. So, divination. 
another word for it. I was just trying to see like what words you've heard it described as, but you know, like you said, they did, probably didn't call it anything. Well, some people even go as far as to call it like uh, folk magic as opposed to like folk practice. They use the term folk magic. What do you think about that? Well, I guess it's true. You know, if if you believe in, uh, you know, you can read verses out of the Bible and it heals and protects and all. That. I guess yes. I guess it is. Was that word ever used? Any word like that, like magic or spell or anything like that? Yeah, but my dad always fortune telling. My dad always he never believed in stuff like that because that was evil. Hmm. So t- telling the future then? Yeah, he always thought that was evil. Okay, that's interesting. So so healing from the Bible and things like that, but no fortune telling, like no trying to figure out what the future will be, other than like no, signs from God. No. That's interesting. Uh, do you know what a dowsing rod is? Is that where you find the water? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did anyone in your family My dad do? My believed in that. He would uh, take a peach tree and try and find water. Some of the neighbors used to do it too when we when we grew up. Yeah, that's cool. It's like mm-hmm. you find like a stick and you kind of like hold the two pieces, two ends of it, and it goes like dips up or down, and you find water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. That's cool. It actually works. Have you personally ever done that? I've seen my dad do it. People say they can also find like lost items or things with that. I don't know about that one, but I do know that it works with water. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, but it does. Where we live, we never had a lot of water anyway, so <laughs> we had wells, you know, and, and uh, stuff like that, but wouldn't have a whole lot of water. Have you ever heard anything to do with like stones, like specific stones, or like looking into a stone or things like that? No. About mirrors. I've always heard a lot of people cover their mirrors in the house because they think it does something to their soul, it chills their soul or something. Like a, I had a sister-in-law that would not let you take her picture because she thought it stole her soul. That's interesting. Okay. There, there's a practice called scrying where you can like look into a mirror or a shiny surface, like a bowl of water or something like that, and sometimes you can see visions. Yeah, I've heard of that one too, but I've never saw it. Okay, interesting. Or the, like sometimes like randomness, like you do something random and it can like give you an answer, kind of like flipping a coin or drawing straws or throwing dice, things like that. Yeah, I've heard of that too. I've never, I've never saw it done either. Okay, there's like, uh, back to, to hoodoo, which there's throwing of bones, where they take bones and they throw them and they kind of, uh, based on oh, where they, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. based on where they lay, they know something. Yeah, that's true. Okay, ever seen anything like that? Uh, I've saw it, I just can't remember who did it, but somebody I know, when I was growing up, I've seen it done with bones, uh, and some people would use chicken bones too, there was a, an old lady's chicken bones that she could see things, you know, and tell you things. But I can't remember who it was. Hmm. But yeah, bones were used in, in telling fortunes and telling things that were supposed to be, you know, like cards, like a deck of cards. My dad never allowed a deck of cards in the house because he said they were evil. Hmm. That's interesting. Like normal playing cards, even? Yes, you know, like normal playing cards, like if you had a jack and a king and a queen, you know, and an ace and all those. Never allowed to deck of cards in the house. Okay. Did you know any other people who use cards? Uh, my uncles used to use uh, cards, but you know, I never, I never saw them do it. But I heard my dad and them talk about it. Dad always believed they were evil, so he wouldn't allow them in the house. Okay. Have you ever went and seen like a fortune teller and got your fortune read? Well, there was a uh, lady selling insurance one time that came to my house and told me uh, she read my hand. You know, the go by lines and stuff in your hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, she told me, you know, I had a lot of love in the house, um, that something was going to destroy it, and just little things she told me like that. She couldn't tell me all of it, but she told me some things. I told her I didn't want to know the bad part. Huh. <laughs> Let's see, is there anything else? Uh, do you ever do anything where you take a bunch of ingredients and put them together, like herbs and things, anything like that? My grandparents used to, my great-grandmother did, she used to put herbs and things together and swear that, you know, it would heal you, you know, just for different purposes of your body. Okay. Are there, is there like any ingredients, like specifically, like this ingredient is good? Well, they say uh, garlic is good, you know, for like high blood pressure, a lot of cholesterol in your body. That garlic, you can eat garlic and it's supposed to help that. Oh, I was just thinking about that, actually. Because it yeah, like... Garlic, uh, garlic think... is actually really good. And so is um, elderberry. You can eat elderberry. You can drink the wine 
They have elderberry wine. They have jam. They make jam with elderberries. I mean, elderberry is great for your body. It's, it's a really good healing. With the uh, with the garlic thing, I was thinking because that's where the whole idea that it could kill a vampire comes from. Because it's like yes, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that too. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh. garlic is actually good for the body. It really is. So, uh, yeah. what what about uh, blood? Is there like things that people do with blood? My mom knew something about that, but she, she mom never went into to telling us a lot of things that she knew about. Uh, I guess because dad didn't want her to, you know. But you know, there was something about the blood that my mom knew, but I'm not quite sure what it was. Even like I said, my dad didn't believe in evil stuff, so we just didn't mm-hmm. talk about stuff like that in the house. Okay, so so blood was always bad. Then you think? I don't know. Um, I don't actually think it's bad. You know, the body's got to have it. Mm-hmm. But I think there was some uh, some things people used to do with blood back in the day that was kind of evil. You know, I've heard stuff like that. But people done a lot of rituals with blood. You know, like chicken blood and different types of animal blood. They would do rituals with. I don't know if it's true or not. I've never saw it done. Okay, like mix it into something, like ingredient wise. No, actually, they just used the blood out of the chicken and would put it on the. Whatever they wanted, something evil done to what I've always heard. Uh, maybe, like a curse, you know, like a, they would use the blood for a, a curse on, on another person or something like that. Okay. Have you have you ever heard about that, like cursing, thing, people being cursed? In my family, I've never saw it. Okay. What about, uh, like, witches, like ideas that some people are witches? <laughs> oh, sometimes I think there's a lot of witches out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, not actually. There's a lot of, like, uh, folkloric things, like, to protect against witches. Yeah. Like, you put this up, the witches can't get in or something like that. Yeah, like they say, if you lay a broom across your doorway, uh, that the witch can't step over it or something. I've heard that one. Mm-hmm. I think of, like, horseshoes, too. Like, you have, like, a horseshoe above your barn. It's good luck or something like that. Yeah, or above your door. Yes, I've always heard that. That's a good luck. Like, my dad used to do that, too. He would put a horseshoe over our door when you entered. It's kind of hard to, you know, name them all or list them all or get all the interesting things, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. I mean, I've heard, well, like you said, you know, there's books on it and and there's words for all of it. A lot of people back in the day just went along with whatever your parents told you, know, like the healing or the, or the teething thing or something like that. So you, you said you did know one thing about like warding off witches. Do you know any other things about that? Like warding off, I don't know. Well, I've always heard witches don't like black cats, but every time I've seen a witch, she's used a black cat with them. <laughs> you know, like a picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've always heard they didn't like uh, water. Mm-hmm. It's just different sayings you hear. I mean, you can read all kinds of stuff. I'm sure it's, it's out there somewhere in books, but... Just getting to, like, the stuff that you've heard and experienced and stuff like that, it's kind of hard to, like, uh, get to it all or keep track of it all, you know what I mean? Because, like... I could mention, just use the word folksy and say, what kind of folksy things do you know? But then, like, it wouldn't cover everything that you've been told that's interesting or spiritual, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. It would, yeah. I have to, like, bring up things and see, like, what you remember or what, you know, comes to mind when I say it. Yeah, mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to... Have, they didn't have any certain uh, term for it. They just used it. And most of them just did it. And they was told by their family. And, and that's how they usually did it all. You know, it would have been nice if they would put a name to some of it, but I don't guess they just thought about it at the time. It was handed down, like I said, you know, to all those generations. And yeah, like with me, it, like I was trying to look and see, like, I was trying to think about like what superstitions I know. And it kind of got mixed in with just like the advice that I know. So I was like trying to separate what I know that is superstitious and what I know that is just like a, a good advice or something like that. Because I, I knew the pencil test and I never thought that it was a, a spiritual thing until, you know, eventually I'm like, wait a minute, how does the pencil even move? And then I'm like, oh, that is something spiritual, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, indeedy. Do you know any other ways of uh, telling if a baby's a boy or a girl? Well, some people say if you carry the baby up high, it's a boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's more of a medical thing. Uh-huh, yep, yeah. and then some of them say, um, if you carry it low, it's a girl. I've heard a lot of people say, if you have heartburn a lot, your baby will be born with a lot of hair. Hmm. You know, I don't know what that has to do with the baby's hair, but that's what they say. One thing, that, uh, a superstition that I, like, compulsively do is when you get up from a swing or a rocking chair, you have to stop it from rocking, because, like, if it keeps rocking, it's bad. Yes, my dad used to tell us that all the time, too. When you 
you got up out of the chair or, or rocking chair, make sure it wasn't rocking because it's supposed to be bad luck. Yeah, apparently because the spirits will come and sit down or something like that. I got a few more questions here about like um, other topics. Ghosts, for example. Have you had any ghostly experiences? Uh, actually, yes, I have. <laughs> uh, I woke up one morning and there was like this, well, I don't know actually what it was. It was something in the bed with me and it was like the fingers, you know, how you take fingers and you go down your spine cord like someone's measuring you, your body, the outline of your body. I've had that. And then I went to close the door for no reason, it, like the door just got stuck and I couldn't pry it loose and all at once it gave way, you know, like someone was holding it and things like that. And then um, when I was little, I'd sleepwalk, but I, I could actually see a certain person and I would follow them wherever they led me in my, you know, in my dreams. Dreams are a big thing in like folklore. Do people in your family have any like prophetic dreams or dreams that come true or things like that? No, not that I can recall. Uh -uh. Okay, have you ever had like something like that? Like you have a dream and it tells you something or it comes through in some way? Not that I can think of. I've had all kinds of dreams, but no. Okay, ever had an experience where like you were asleep and then something was in the room and you like couldn't move, something like that? Like sleep paralysis? No, but then just that whatever that was in the bed with me that it was moving, you know, just along the side of me. It was like drawing an outline of my whole like it was going down the back side of me, like from my neck all the way down. Mm -hmm. Could you not move at that point? No, it scared me. No, I did not move. Hmm. But then after, you know, it quit, then I got up out of the bed, and I thought, what the heck was that? Mm -hmm. I first I thought, you know, he said, playing a trick on me, he was at work, so I don't know what it was. So any other uh, spirit stuff? Uh, have, have you ever lived in a, a place you thought was haunted or visited? Oh, yes, yes. When we was growing up, yes, we did. And I, actually, it was a like a two-story building. It was an old apartment building. It was right beside the railroad tracks. And my sister got woke up one night, and she swore she saw the devil in the fire in the fireplace we had inside the house. And she was actually screaming to the top of her lungs. She woke everybody in the house up. Hmm. And then there was several times, you know, like my brother had fell down the steps for no reason at all and cut his knee open. That happened in that place. And there was a lot of other strange things that happened to other people in there, you know, like breaking their arms or getting hurt or something like that. But there was never anything good about that place. And they finally tore it down. They said it was haunted. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the only haunted place you've ever been in? Yep, pretty much. What about any, like, haunted items? They never owned a haunted item or had anyone who has an item they think is haunted? No. What about uh, psychics? you ever know anyone who thinks they're psychic or that you think is psychic? I think fortune tellers think they're psychic just because they think they can tell your fortune. But other than that, no. Okay, what about like individual people who are not really like fortune tellers but just, you know, maybe they have like a psychic vision or they think they know the future or something like that, something happens? No, my mom used to see like uh, black images of, you know, like, outline of people. Hmm. But, but other than that, that's, that's all I think of on that part. Like a, like a silhouette? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Sounds like, like, they shadow. They say uh, you can take herbs, like, you know, different type of herbs you can use for that and burn it, and um, they will go away. It's supposed to run the evil away. Hmm. You know, run the evil off. So that sounds like, like, shadow people type stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what it was, like, shadow people. You said, was it your, your grandmother who you said had, like, herbs and things she mixed together? Mm hmm Does she keep those in, like, jars or something like that? Yes, mm hmm Just things you make up, like, out of herbs and stuff like that. Things you get out of the woods. Yeah, what, what would you do with things like that? Would you just have it in your house or, like, have it on your person? Or what, what would you do with it? Yeah, I'll, like, put it in, like, little jars or something like that. People used to do it way back in. You know, they'd keep it in jars and stuff. Just use it when they had to. Like, how would they use it? Would they just keep it in their house? Yes, uh -huh. they kept it in the house. Okay, interesting. What about candles? Anything like you burn this candle and this happens? Oh, I've always heard if you burn a candle in the window, you know, someone would always return to you. I've always heard that one, but I'm not sure not. Uh, what about, ever seen anything like a, like a monster or a Sasquatch or any kind of interesting creature that you couldn't explain? Well, I've seen things, but it's just hard to make out, you know, like you'd be out in the woods and think you saw something strange, you know, that you couldn't explain it, but... But you know it's something, you just don't know what, you know what I'm saying? Okay, have you ever had like experience with like a, like a full-on Sasquatch or monster in the woods or somewhere? 
I can't actually say it was a monster, maybe like a shadow of something, you know. It, it could have been, well, like I said, it could have been a, a, an animal or something like that. But it was just, you know, you look one minute there and the next minute it's not. About like uh, knocking noises, uh, whooping sounds, calls, footprints? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, now, when we were little and lived out on the hill, my grandmother said she saw something. It was solid white. She said it was like a, it uh, wasn't as big as a horse. And, and something would run around our house like in a circle every night. It would just run around our house, sound like a elephant or something outside, but we never saw anything. And then my grandmother saw that big uh, white thing, uh, and it was standing there looking in the window at her, but she didn't know what it was. Wow. But she said it was like some type of animal, like a, it was, wasn't big as a horse, but it was something like, it had four legs, whatever it was, but she said she couldn't make out what it was. Hmm. And it was standing there, you know, in the road. She was looking out the window, standing there looking. Okay. Did it have, like, fur? Uh, yeah. It was some type of, I'm sure it was some kind of animal, but, you know, like she said, she never saw anything like it. Okay. So she saw a white thing in the road looking out the window. And uh-huh. then you said there was, who who saw something running around, or knew someone was running around the house? Yeah, there was something, I don't know what it was, but it sounded like a big elephant would always run around in her house in the night. And wake us all up. We never did see anything. We never felt no tracks or nothing. Okay, so, so you all heard it though? Yep, we all heard it. That's interesting. When when did that happen? Like, those two things, do you know? Oh, God, that was when I was really little. I was about six or seven. Hmm. Coming around there. Yeah, yeah, I was little. Okay. My grandma used to come out and stay with us and uh, we used to catch rainwater. You know, people caught water back in the day in barrels and stuff and she would come out and wash our hair in the, in the rainwater and she said it was the best thing for your hair and it would make our hair so soft and shiny. She was the one that saw the, the white, whatever, that something, whatever it was in the road. Hmm. And that was on my dad's side too. Okay, what, what was on his side? His, his mom, it was his mom that saw the uh, white thing. Okay, that's very interesting because there, there are other stories about white things in, in West Virginia, like yeah. white hairy creatures and furry creatures. Okay. Well, Did... I'm sure that was probably one of them. <laughs> she said she saw it, you know, just, and she said just stood there and looked at her. You know, she said it wasn't quite as big as a horse, but it was some type of white animal. Hmm. Did they have any ideas about, like, what it would be? No. No, or... I don't, because, you know, she didn't know. She said it was weird. Has it, have you ever known anyone who's seen, like, a Sasquatch or something, like a flying creature or anything like that? No, uh-uh. No. Nope. What about uh, a UFO? UFOs? Like lights in the sky that you couldn't explain? Well, we'd see some lights in the sky, but Dad would always say, oh, it's just an airplane, you know, and we'd just let it go with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. No flying saucers? Aliens? No. Okay. Is there any, like, light anomalies? Like weird lights and stuff? Weird lights? No, just other than my dad, you know, said he'd seen that light uh, coming around the hill when his dad died. And God had showed him that sign with the light that, you know, his dad had died. So that's the only thing I know about the light. Um... UFOs, monsters, spirits, yep, I think I've covered most of the things there. What about, uh, have you ever experienced anything that you would consider like a miracle or like an apparition or things like that? i say miracles come from the Bible, I would say that. That's more like a spiritual thing, too. Uh, no, I haven't ever saw anything. Yeah, like a, like a vision or something, you would say this is from God? My dad used to have them all the time, but he had visions, you know, things that, that he couldn't even make out. Visions of of water, a lot of people had visions of water uh, they would see and stuff like that, but, you know, I have never saw anything or nothing. Other than just my sister saying that devil in the fire, she swears up and down, she saw. Okay, what, what happened there was, like, she was, like, asleep and she looked at the fireplace and there was something there? Yeah, I woke her up. She was asleep and she woke up and she said she saw the devil. All he was warming his hands and he had his hands in the fire. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, did she describe what he looked like? No, she described his hands, though. She said they were bony, long-looking, red, nasty-looking things. That, you know, that it just um, had his hands, like, in the fire. But it wasn't really burning his hands, but, it, you know, she said it was evil-looking. Anything else I didn't cover? Anything, like, interesting or spiritual or things you think I should know about? Uh, no, I can't think of any right off hand. I'm sure, like, when I get off phone, I can think. 
think about kind of things I could tell you, but right now... You can call me back if you uh, think of anything. Okay. All right. Okay, I will. I'm just interested in, like, folk practices, like, kind of things that people pass on down generational lines, and then, like, weird experiences that people have, like, spiritual, mystical experiences. Uh, my dad passed away. My sister said that when she opened up the door, her door is like... Um, a cloud was there, and she could put her hand through it, but no one was there. It's just like a, a cloud-like thing. When uh, my mom passed away, before my sister even got in the driveway, she knew that mom had passed away because she said she had the, the sweetest smell of flowers. You know, like there was flowers blooming there, and she was walking through them, and she knew that my mom had passed away. I guess the good Lord, you know, sends signs in different ways to people. Where where did you go to, to church at? Was it just like a little Baptist church? It was a little Baptist church right there. Like there's an alcohol. We uh, walked up the hollow there, and, and the little church that there, when you went up the hollow, it was on your left. It's still there. People have made a house into it now. Hmm. Anything interesting happened there? Uh, no, just a lot of people, you know, singing and uh, me and my mom and sisters all used to sing. We started singing there, and then we went all over singing in different places, you know, for people. It was nice. We liked to sing in churches, and it was really nice. That's my dad cool. never went to church with us. He never did. Hmm. He was always mom. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. What was his uh, reasoning for that? Uh, he was old. Dad was, went by the old ways, you know, like he said, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You don't have to go to church to pray. You know, you just have to believe. Hmm. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yep. And um, he also saw, I was thinking, he was sitting on the porch one day uh, just looking at the clouds, and he said he dropped his head down, and when he looked back up, he saw angels, you know, in the sky appear before him. He said it was angels. Huh. He said they were couldn't see their face because the glow was so bright that you can make the outline out, you know, like angels. And he said it was amazing. Okay, well, that, that's really cool. Like, uh, I find, like, from what you've told me of your dad, it's kind of interesting that it sounds kind of relatable with the whole, you know, being spiritual but not really wanting to go to church and reading a lot of books and things like that. It sounds pretty relatable to, to my views. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way my dad was. You know, he, he always said it's what a person, you know, believed in. And it's how much faith you had from yourself, you know, your own soul and your heart spiritually, what he believed. Uh, you didn't have to go to church just because another person did or, you know, you stayed home. My dad stayed home, read the Bible, and, and that's just how he believed. And he went and tried to go to the Bible, you know, be kind to others, and, you know, all that stuff. And he just, that's how dad was. He was just plain old dad. <laughs> did, um, did he do any kind of, like, charity work or community work, things like that? No, he just helped people if they needed help, you know, just stuff like that. If they needed a job done or something like that, you know, he volunteered to do it or help dig wells. He's, he dug a lot of wells with, you know, the neighbors and cut a lot of trees and stuff like that, you know, for firewood, for people and stuff. Did, did he have, uh, like, an altar at home, like any kind of spiritual space since he didn't go to church? No, he always talked about closets, you know. I'd always say you get... Uh, if he was in a dark closet, your left hand would no, your left hand supposed to not know what your right hand is doing or something like that. Oh, that that's I interesting. I did understand that one. That's interesting. That's um, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says that uh, instead of praying out in the streets, you should go and pray in your closet so that only your yeah, that's what Dad did. That's that, yep, that's it. Wow, that's what he told us. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So taking that one literally there because yes, uh, it is. Yes, it is. Because Jesus was saying, like, pray secretly and don't don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. So that, you know. Absolutely. That's what Dad used to tell us all the time. That's interesting. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's not, not outside praying in, in, like, the churches and the streets, but praying, like, inside so that only God can see you praying. It's interesting. Yes. But so he didn't have, like a, a, like, a special space or, like, a chair or anything that he would, you know, sit in to read the Bible or pray or anything. He went in the closet. Yeah, he would go in the closet, and then he would sit in his, um, he would sit in an old rocking chair and, and read his Bible to us most of the time. We'd sit there by the, we had an old man on a fireplace inside the house, and we would all sit there by the fireplace, and Dad would read the Bible, and, and then Mom, she played the guitar, you know, and she'd pick and play on her guitar, and we'd sit there, all sit there and listen to her. It, it was, it was nice. That's cool. Was there anything, like, in the closet, like a cross or anything like that? No. Now, uh, we believed in the anointing of the cloth, you know, where you put, uh, for people that was sick, and sometimes it would heal them, and sometimes, you know, it didn't. And 
but yeah, you could anoint the cloth and then just pin it to a person's clothing or the, you know put it on their body and it's supposed to go on. Hmm. I bet you guys had a bunch of interesting things you guys would do if someone was sick. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did that, and uh, you know, like the like I said, there's a lot of herbs and spices and stuff like that you can do. My grandma used to do all that. I don't. She never did. You know, she was she was an Irish lady. She used to dip. You know, back in the day, women used to dip that nasty old snuff black looking stuff, <laughs> and she did that. Did she, did she ever teach you any of the uh, the herbal stuff, like the jars and stuff? No, she showed them to me, and she would tell me different things. But I was little growing up, and I didn't really realize, you know, at the time that it was information I should have paid more attention to, and things I should have watched her do to learn to keep things going. You know, when you're young like that, you don't think about it. Mm-hmm. You just, you know, you know your parents can do it, and so you don't worry about it. You know, like I said. There's a lot of stuff that was taken for granted that people should have really paid more attention to. Okay, what about uh, like funerary customs? What do you mean, like? Yeah, you know, like any any special interesting things for like when you bury someone, like you gotta use this kind of wood, you gotta do this kind of thing, anything like that. I've always heard my dad say something about uh, wood, so the lungs couldn't get to it. You know, it's easy that I forget what what any type of, of wood he was talking about. I know that like the the typical like. Customary funeral and stuff would be like a pine wood box, six feet down. Yeah, there's a lot of people I know when I was growing up was buried in, in pine wood boxes, and maybe that's why. Yeah, well, pine is the the tree that doesn't die in winter, so it's like eternal and immortal symbolism there. There, there were old stuff about how if you bury someone, you bury them facing towards the east. Have you heard that? I've heard that. I've always heard that when I was growing up, but you know, I never did understand why. Well, there's this whole thing about Christ comes back from the east, and so when the dead rise from their grave, they rise facing him. Have you heard about that, like the resurrection of the dead on Judgment Day? Yeah, 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 that's what, yep, you're right. That's what Dad used to say, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, did he talk about the resurrection of the dead? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, anything specific about that? No, just, you know, a lot of people don't believe in that. Uh, a lot of people do. It's just, I guess, it's a spiritual thing again, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some, some people aren't aware that, that that part's in the Bible, that uh, when Christ returns, the dead are supposed to rise up from their graves. Yes, the, the ones in Christ are supposed to rise, yes. The ones that believed in Christ while they was here on earth, and like the Bible says, if you don't believe, if you don't acknowledge me on earth, then I will not acknowledge you in heaven. I think that's some, some way the verse went. Or if you're ashamed of me or something, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Anything else about like uh, like anyone have any interesting things they wanted to like have in their coffin with them or to wear when they were buried? Anything like that? Well, see, we put mom and dad's picture in theirs, but it was just something we thought you know to put in there. And they kept their wedding rings on. A lot of them did. I guess different people believed in you know like the different things they liked. Like if they liked a certain type of jewelry or something, there was a lot of crosses. We put that in there. Or uh, if they wanted their Bible with them, you know, a lot of people put their Bibles in there with them. Just different things like that. I think that's covered my all my main questions. I had like one more topic I wanted to ask you about. Because okay. uh, since the, the pandemic, we've had a lot more talk about you know, unionizing and things like that. And I know that, uh, you know, in West Virginia, there's a big history of unionizing. So I want to ask you if you know anything interesting about coal mining unions. Well, I can tell you that when we were growing up, a lot of people would say they wasn't union. They was union. My dad was a union man. He always was. You said your your father. You even talked about your your grandfather. Was he? What was his thing? Was he a coal miner? Uh huh. They all come from uh, Kentucky, hmm. and uh, they came here and started working in the mines here back in the day. It was way back in the day. So your your father he was union, and your your grandfather was union too. Um, I don't think they had it back when my grandfather was. But they, they started it when my dad, yeah, worked in the mines, yeah. Mm. Were, were they UMWA? Uh-huh, yep. That's cool. Do you, do you know anything about uh, the Battle of Blair Mountain? No, not too much. <laughs> okay, or like Mate Juan and things like that, all the like union conflicts? No, I've, I've heard stuff about it, but you know, we were little then when my dad was in the mines, so I, I don't remember. Okay. Do you have any examples when of the union being helpful for your, your parents or your grandparents? I think they had a, a better, uh, the UNW had a better hospitalization for, 
you know, for the and health insurance and stuff like that for you know their people. Was there any? Um, do you know any like interesting stories about like striking, like long strikes, or like anything like violence happening or anything like that? Well, your mom's dad, which was my husband, he used to go out and be on the picket lines all the time and uh, done quite a bit of stuff. They would, you know, if uh, they tried to get people in there to break up the unions, and they would throw rocks at their vehicles and turn the vehicles over and. All kind of stuff. Fight, fight like cats and dogs. But other than that, that's about all I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like fight scabs and stuff. Yeah, they did. They did a lot of that. Yep. <laughs> okay. Did, did... Yeah, they, they did a lot of that, and they also used clubs and a little bit of everything. But yeah, there was a lot of fighting involved in it. Okay. Was was that with uh, your dad and grandpa too, or just with Papa? Just with Papa mostly. <laughs> okay, so he was a little bit more, you know, radical about it then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> if you sat there and starved to death, he would not go non-union. He would say union, man. It, even if you starved to death, which a lot of people did have, have it really bad trying to keep the union in there, they would go to the But it paid off, I guess, in the end. Because, you know, they come out with better benefits for the coal miners and, and uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So is there any uh, like particularly long strikes you remember? You know, like being on strike from the coal mine for a long time? Yes, strike one time for, oh God, I don't know how many months they was out for. And then one year, we, he was out on strike for a long, long time, and Christmas rolled around, and we didn't have nothing, you know, we didn't have no money, no nothing to get the kids presents with. And so his sister bought them down presents and stuff, and that was a rough time. It, but they was out for, God, over six months on that strike. So did strikes usually, like, persist of, like, Picket lines, like forming a picket line. Oh yeah, most of them did. Yeah. Yeah, or just not going to work and things like that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other things from the union? No, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I, I find it very interesting. Like it's interesting history and stuff like that. Like there's been a lot of big conflicts between like coal mining companies and unions and things like that. And also like the, the scabs too, which is like a, a scab is like someone who is trying to get a job at the thing while the miners are on strike, and so they would like to try yeah, to. They used to call them scabs. Yep. Yeah. yeah, like strike breakers. Yep. Yeah, and they so, called them scabs. That's what they used to call them. And so they would try to, like, go through the picket line, and then, you know, the union people would have to, like, force them to not go through the picket line, and there was a lot of conflict there. Yeah. Yep, I know yeah. Papa said don't cross a picket line. Yeah, he never crossed the picket line. No, he never did. So, you know, do you know any, like, big historical things? Did anyone ever talk about, like, Blair Mountain or big historical union stuff? No, I can't think of anything right offhand. Because the UMWA is pretty famous for that. Yeah. Where they, like, they fought on Blair Mountain against the uh, mine company. And like the yeah. detective agency, Baldwin Feltz, things like that. Uh, did your uh, dad and your papa, did they do coal mining like here in, in West Virginia? Like where did they go for their mines? Well, my grandpa did most of his in Kentucky, but my dad did all of his here, yeah. What decade would that be in when he was doing that? Uh, I'd say it was in the, uh, well, let's see, I was born in 53. And he was working in the mines before I was born. Late 40s, somewhere around there. And then after I was born, he worked at a, a glass house for a long time. And then he eventually went back to coal mining. Hmm. I'd say the 40s and the 50s, somewhere around there. Okay. And then when would your grandpa be? Would that be like 20s, 30s? Yeah, he worked in the mines, you know, when my dad was small. And my dad was born in 28, uh, 1928. So, hmm. yeah, it, it was back then. And then, you know, most boys... If their grand, if their parents were coal miners, most of them turned out to be coal miners too, because you know they thought that's where. Well, a lot of people made the money. They made they threw these old company houses up for the coal miners and their families, and you know the super, the superintendents is the one that got the best housing mm-hmm. as far as that went. And then you know people used to work for Scripps, and they would use it at the whole company stores and stuff like that. Mm. So did you grow so, up in did you grow up in company houses and all that? No. Okay. Uh, I've lived in several, but my dad used to rent, you know, rent some. I used to live in one right there. It was an old company house. And then... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but that's like after it's, uh, you know, not owned by the company more. And it's just like a thing you can rent, right? Uh-huh. Like yep. an abandoned company house. Yep. So were, were all the coal miners on your dad's side of the family? Yeah, most of my dad, yeah, most of my dad's side was uh, coal miners. Okay. What about your mother's side of the family? What did they do? Well, I had uncles. His brothers went in the military, served in the military, 
long as they could. You know, I had the uncles that was in the army. But eventually all of them become coal miners later on, so yeah. Okay. Was there was there any other denominations in your family, just Baptist and then your sister's a Catholic? Uh no. That was the only two um, religions within our family that I know of. Yeah, were the were the churches around? Were they like mostly Baptist churches? Oh uh, no, there was Church of God and Church of Christ, Jesus Christ only and just different things like that, but we never attended none of those. Okay. Did your dad have, um, like, did he think that, like, the Baptist denomination was, like, the, the best one, or did he, what, what was his views on that? Like, you said he was Baptist. Is there, like, a reason why he was Baptist? I think it was because his parents were. Yeah. Like, uh, if you're a Democrat or you're Republican, I think that's handed down through the families, too. <laughs> okay. You know, like, we was raised Democratic all our life. Yeah. I used to say the Republicans were rich snobs. <laughs> other than that, that's pretty much about what they thought about each other back then, you know. He always said the Democrats were the poor people. Mm -hmm. Did you know people who had uh, different denominations, different parts of Christianity? We never really got interested in any other kind of religion that they had. Like uh, the Mormons or the Latter-day Saints or anything like that? Uh, Not that I can think of. Mm -hmm. There's there's like 101 different denominations, you know, all kinds of them, like Seventh-day Adventists, Lutherans, and Orthodox, and I got a bunch of them. But yeah, like you said, yeah. it, it usually comes down to like what their parents were, and they kind of pass that along. Yep. Okay, I think I've covered most of the questions there. Okay. Was there was there anything else like interesting history wise that you think I should know, or you want to talk about for like West Virginia and Appalachia? Oh, then you know, uh, when we was growing up, it was it was really hard. I mean, uh, my grandmother helped us out a lot, you know, and my uncle he would bring us stuff out, you know, for Christmases and toys and. I remember I got a black doll one year for Christmas, and uh, my sisters got two new ones, but I got the old one. But I love that doll. I swear it's something special to me, you know. But uh, other than things like that, you know, th- things you think of is when you're growing up in your childhood. We used to have to walk off that hill for just over three miles, and uh, we would walk it to go to school. And, and you know, they would back then you, you had to pay for your books and your schooling and stuff when you got older. So then the principal, he took our walking money that we were supposed to got and used it on our books. So, you know, but we had a pretty rough growing up. But it was a good rough, you know what I mean? You <laughs> Sometimes you would like to go back and, and just do some things over. You know, like we used to swing on grapevines and, and play in mud holes and all that good stuff. People you catch lightning bugs and play tag till dark, and, you know. Just everything that kids don't do anymore. Mm-hmm. But we had a good childhood. We didn't have everything we wanted, but I guess we had what we needed because we made it. And sometimes, you know, growing up rough makes you, you know, it's pretty tough sometimes too. So I think I've covered all the, the questions there. All righty then. If you think of anything else, you know where I'm at. Yep, and if you think of any, like, superstitious things or uh, spiritual things, comes to mind later. Okay, I can do that, baby doll. So anything else there before I end off the, the call there, Maul? Oh, I can't think of anything right offhand, baby doll. Okay. Okay, I'll I love that. you. Love you too, Maul. Bye-bye, baby. Yep. It, it don't take, like my dad used to say, if you have enough faith as big as a grain of a mustard seed... You know, like they said, you could move mountains, and you sure can. I, I have a, a little necklace my dad gave me before he passed when I was little. It's got a mustard seed inside of it, inside the necklace. I still have it, yeah. <laughs>